Bloom News Brief. More info at fullandbloom.com. Anthrax bassist Frank Bella was recently interviewed by Sonic Perspectives. On the time Anthrax broke into Metallica guitarist Kirk Hammett's studio. These are the drinking days with Metallica. They came to the show. For the guys and girls who haven't read my book yet, this is one of the fun stories. Anthrax was playing in San Francisco. The guys from Metallica come out, and we decide, all right, let's go out and do some bar hopping. So we had a couple of cars, sober guys driving, so we can have fun. Bar hopping and bar hopping. So Kirk leaves because he's got an appointment the next morning, and we keep going heavy. The shots were plentiful that night. It came to the point where I was in the back of Lars's Range Rover, and those turns in San Francisco are pretty crazy. We were weaving, all of a sudden, I threw up in my hand. They're looking at me going, what the fuck? Then with my elbow, I put the window down and just toss it out. But then it didn't stop. It kept going. It was like a faucet on the side of poor Lars's car. The whole side was green. It was disgusting. So I clean up, go to the next bar. We're still going. That's what happened in those days. So after the bars were closing, somebody mentioned, we need to jam. Where can we jam? It's two o'clock in the morning. Where are we going to jam? Somebody says, Kirk has a studio in the back of his house and sometimes he leaves the door open. Yeah, let's go. We're fucking out of our minds. Both cars are going right to Kirk's house. And this is a great area, great neighborhood. You can't make a lot of noise. So we're like, shh. We're walking up this hill to his house. Go around the back, look in the window, nobody's there, open the door, turn on the lights. The room is filled with amps. Amps, drums, SVT amps, guitars everywhere. Everything you want to make fucking noise is there. A great setup. So we're kids in a candy store at this point. We go in there, we turn every knob up to 10. If there was an 11, everything would have been turned up to 11. Everybody put on a guitar, bass, Charlie went on the drums, Lars went on the drums and we're just screaming at the top of our fucking lungs imagine that sound anthrax and metallica in that room just the loudest noise we can we didn't even know what the fuck we were playing every riff came out just riffs from fucking everywhere so all of a sudden this is 10 minutes in and there's a window coming down from the stairway coming from a connection with the house and all of a sudden i see kirk coming down and he looks in the window and his eyebrows go down he's fucking pissed i felt horrible i can see him but we can't hear him he's like what the fuck man i'm like oh shit everything shuts down he walks through the door he's pissed he's in his robe he was sleeping the poor guy was sleeping it was really bad we all felt horrible long story short he goes get out he just throws us out so we walk with our heads down and we felt bad some of us were snickering but it was horrible i felt bad so we're walking down the hill back to the cars i'm standing next to lars and i said dude i feel really bad now i don't know if lars was playing me or not but he goes maybe we should go apologize for it and i was drunk so i said all right you know what let's go apologize so we go back up the hill to his front door now the front door is this big beautiful glass door beautiful i ring the bell two minutes nobody answers ring the bell again nobody's answering I'm still a little tipsy, so I lean back on the door. Kirk, come on! All of a sudden, I lose my balance and my ass falls. I fall into the door. All of a sudden, the whole fucking thing breaks. I don't know how my ass didn't get cut, but glass is everywhere. Me and Lars, like in a comedy, look at each other. Oh, shit! All we hear from the background is we were running. Somebody opening the door. Dude, what the fuck? You broke my fucking door? It was Kirk. He came out and I felt so bad. So everybody goes back to homes and hotels and all that stuff. Anthrax was on tour. We had a show the next day. I'm hungover. I'm in the dressing room playing my bass. And my tour manager comes in and he has a piece of paper in his hand. And he goes, Frank, where were you last night? Uh, We went out with the Metallica guys. Had a great time. A little hungover. He said, you did, huh? Well, this was just faxed to me. It's a bill. An invoice. $13,000 for one big door. And I didn't have $13,000. I was scared shitless. And I'm looking at it. I can't afford this. What the fuck? 
this is $13,000. I wasn't making that kind of money. And he goes, well, it just came and you're gonna have to pay it. I felt so terrible. I called Kirk up immediately and I said, dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, I fell into the door. I didn't know what to do, so I just ran. I'm so sorry. He kind of had a chuckle at it because he wanted to get me. It's cool, dude, just don't do it again, okay? So I found out that was a setup to really scare me, which they really did. He said later to somebody in an interview it was only $850. More news at fullandbloom.com. Full